Assalamu alaikum everybody. Thank you for joining in. Uh, peace and blessing be upon you all. Thank you for joining in. Now, in front of me, I have uh, Maulana Atikur Rahman. He is an imam um, and he is a community activist. He has his own organization called Al Adab um, Institute. That's right. Yep. Okay, brilliant. Now, before I introduce you uh, properly, um, for the people of Oldham, he needs no introduction. For the people who are not from Oldham, he is somebody who is a force to be reckoned with. He is definitely somebody who is um, going against the grain, propagating the truth and what the community needs and wants, despite its controversies. We'll get into that very soon. Uh, Moana, thank you for joining in. Assalamu alaikum. I really, really appreciate it. Alhamdulillah. You're the one I, I, I've actually been waiting for for a long, long time. <laughs> Inshallah. Uh, because um, before I get into the uh, controversy stuff, um, your Al-Adab is quite curious. You've been, how long, how long have you been doing that for? Al-Adab was initiated in 2016. So we're talking, it's been eight, eight, eight years now, Alhamdulillah, going on to nine years. So um, yeah, it started off uh, in the living room of my father's house. And now, mashallah, it's grown to what it is today. Alhamdulillah. All right. Alhamdulillah. Cool, cool. What What did you do there? Yeah, I found those. So initially, we started off with a lesson of hadith, uh, prophetic sayings of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So every Friday evening, uh, in my father's house, uh, in the living room, we started off with a group of what two, three people initially. So every Friday, um, we used to gather in the evening, nine till ten was a fixed time, nine till ten in the evening. And we used to go over a book of hadith by Imam Bukhari, Rahimahullah, uh, Al Adab al Mufrid. It's a small work of hadith from him. Oh, yeah. Um, just, just bear in mind our views on all Muslims. Awesome. Uh, so, Al Adab is a uh, collection of hadith, collection okay. of sayings of the Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So, we used to discuss every week, uh, you know, five, six uh, statements of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as we're going through every week. And the numbers grew. So, initially, for the first two months, say, up to five, six people used to attend weekly on Friday. And then by the third month, fourth month, fifth month, half a year passed by. We've got over 10, 15, 20. And it came to a point we started using two rooms in my father's house. We had to open up the doors and use the dining room and the living room, combine it together. And then numbers grew to about 40, 50, 60. Alhamdulillah. Uh, all praises to Allah. Why, why is it now? Uh, now it's been shifted over. Yeah, I'm an imam in a masjid, so that whole lesson, everything has been shifted into the masjid. Okay. It's happening every Friday in the masjid now, and um, it's just been continuing on, to be honest. We've moved on to on our third book now, so we've progressed from our, the first book to a second different book, and now we're on the third book, alhamdulillah. Yeah. yeah. Um, as as you were growing up, because you're, my age and your age are quite significantly Different, Quite, yeah, far, yeah, different, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately, so while we were in uh, studies, you were this young kid who came with who who, who used to come with your brother, right? That's right. Yeah. And well, anyway, that's way back. <laughs> but as you were growing up, going to high school, and you were you were being very popular over there for for uh, practicing some of the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu some of the practices of the Prophet Sallallahu right? And you also. Because you were you were becoming a hafiz of the Quran, a, a guy That's who memorized right. the Quran, all of it, while also in high school as well, which That's is right. a tremendous, tremendous feat of of persistency and uh, motivation as well for a lot of people and and inspiration. <clears throat> so you were definitely one of those guys who were to look for as a community leader, somebody who can pe pe people be inspired by and look up to. So my so my question is: when you became an imam at mosque. We'll, we'll not mention the mosque uh, because it's not ethical, really. I, 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 wish, I wish the best for him. But when you became an imam, um, you took upon yourself to not be leveraged by it because there was a lot of taboo thing in it. Well, mm. imam was being uh, compromised mm. because they have to listen to the committee members. And the imams nowadays are somewhat lock and key. Not all of them probably, and not not to a certain degree, but they are to a certain extent. How, how did you feel about that? So I think to kind of answer that question, uh, I'll need to step back uh, into how did I actually apply to become yeah. an imam. So traditionally, 
traditionally, when I say traditionally, I'm talking Oldham. I'm not going to talk beyond Oldham. Obviously, we live in Oldham. So traditionally, obviously, um, you'd have an imam coming from the subcontinent world, i.e. India, Pakistan, Bangladesh. They'll come through, they'll have the qualifications as a scholar, as an alim, as a scholar, as a person who's memorized the Quran. And they'll tick a few boxes and that's it. They've got the job or they've got the role to be an imam. So with myself, uh, as soon as I graduated from uh, my studies, um, I wanted to take a very formal route. And by formal, I mean a route that normally you would take with any other job. So I prepared a CV as you would with any other job. I prepared a CV. I put down my experiences, my education and up to date. And I presented that as a, you know, on paper, as a digital copy and a hand, handout paper copy. And I actually gave it out to other imams and other scholars within all of them to say, look, I'm actually looking for an imam at the post to be an imam and you know let me know if you know if if there is anything available so straight away i've taken on a very very strict formal approach but what do you offer jobs anyway because you are definitely on a lot of people's radar right so you i'm sure you were offered uh, positions in masjid even in your local masjids who you used was, to be yes, yes. affiliated by as well correct that's correct right you were you were offered there why why didn't you so, go there again i wanted to go against that norm that it's not about just jumping into a role just because it's your local mosque, your local masjid, it's your local area. I didn't want that. My point is I want to go in in a very formal sort of manner, a professional manner, and I want that dealing to be a very professional dealing. It shouldn't be the case where, you know, I've just gone into a mosque because I know someone or someone knows me or it's my local mosque. I didn't want that. I thought that professionalism will completely just dissolve away. That I wasn't happy with. So I thought, no, rather than doing that, if I was to apply for a job, you know, elsewhere, outside the Islamic setting. That's how you would do it. That's what you do. You'd, you'd but present most, a CV. Most mosques are not like that, though. They're not like that. So that was actually a setback for many. Uh, that, wow, you know, this is something different. You know, this person's not just uh, asking uh, for a role to be an imam in Oldham. He's giving out a CV. He's giving out his actual CV that this is my credentials. This mm. is what I've done. This is what I've achieved. This is my experience. If you like it, you know, let's talk. So when the mosque that I'm currently at, uh, one of the main members at that time, who's not one of the members anymore, um, he actually said, okay, we have an interview. So because I've set, you know, from my side, I've set the tone that, look, it's a CV. So uh, I got that same response back that, okay, right. it's a CV. Let's have an interview. Yeah. So in the interview, obviously conversation started. And from, from that moment, I still said, no, okay, no, this is, this is what I've got to offer. And there was some negotiation. Typically, unfortunately, and I'm going to use that, you know, quite heavily, the word unfortunately here, um, you'd go into a masjid, a mosque, and again, we're talking about Oldham here, you know, you're told that this is what you're going to do. This is the time we want you. This is what we want from you, full stop. Accept it or not, that's up to you. So I kind of took that away from them. I said, no, this is what I've got to offer. These are the days I've got to offer. These are the salah, the prayer times that I can offer. Uh, this is my schedule from my other work. Uh, this is what I've got to offer. If you're happy with this, you know, go back, speak to your committee, speak to your members, and then we'll take it from there. So that's exactly what happened. What what gave you that sort of that, power? I, I, for, for lack of a word, I can't really find a word for it. What what gave you that sort of uh, motivation to, were you, were you earning elsewhere? Um, in terms of earning, yes, I already had a set up Aladab. So uh, you thought you 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 are able to uh, negotiate, have some leverage over them, of course, and negotiate. Uh, I think an understanding where both parties can benefit. That's correct. Yeah, rather uh, than just falling into their traps, and uh, because you're in need of that position, they know and they realize that whatever we tell him to do, he'll have to take it because he's in need of us. Need so, but you but you approached it in a way that you you are not in need of them. You you they were in need of you because of you, what you can offer. Basically. That's right. Yeah. And um, again, uh, all you know, praise goes to my spiritual mentor. So before graduating as a scholar, uh, coming in uh, to back back into Oldham, uh, my spiritual mentor, the late Sheikh Yusuf, rahimahullah, may uh, Allah have mercy upon him, uh, he actually gave us this advice. So his advice was that uh, now you're living in such an era that imamat, the role of being an imam, it can't be your bread and butter. 
you can't go into a situation where now you're offering your entire time, your entire routine, your timetable, everything to one place. And now that salary or that fixed wage or, f- you know, whatever you're getting. Why not? What's wrong with that? You're tied down. You can't do what you mean. You can't speak on the issues that you want to speak about because here now, unfortunately, if your six days or seven days is fixed to that one role, if I try to say something which I know is going to benefit the community, though it might be a bit sour, though it might be a bit controversial, though it might not be, uh, you know, in any sort of way, uh, sweet on the tongue and on the ears, I have to say it. You know, I have a right where I need to speak that which what, what is the truth. What would normally happen if you say things that are, could be bittersweet for people? Unfortunately, in a typical scenario, um, it's, your, it's your role on the line. If you've spoken uh, out, out where they've disliked it, and by they I mean those people that feel as though they've got that control over you, a committee or, or the people of power within the mosque setting. If you've said something which is against, say, uh, their ethos, their background, if it's against something that they're used to and now you've, you know, you've literally shaken the entire community by saying something which now everyone realizes no, it's true, but... They're not happy with it. If that is the case, then obviously your job is on the line. You know, you might that might be your last of Friday sermon. And you're out <laughs> next Friday, you're not gonna be there. You're right, gonna okay. be out. Now, do you think this sort of behavior for mosques is a typical behavior or is it a rare thing? Again, uh, in my limited understanding of mosques, uh, mosques, by the way. Uh, I would say that um it does happen, unfortunately. It happens more often than it should. Yeah, uh, it's, it yeah. happens a lot uh, But Someone has to take the hit Someone has to speak out If uh, we allow yeah. that to be the case Just, to, just to clarify I'm not saying that these, these committee members Or these people in power of this masjid Are uh, uh, blood sucking people I mean they're, they're people with good intentions Of course Right But the method Because of how they grew up And they're, they're sort of the, the begin Bringing in a lot of Cultural aspects mm. um, Of how they grew up And how they manage things They they tend to Hold on to uh, Traditional things as, Let's just say But that has been a hindrance In the, in the new era In the modern day era Where alims are not You know Brought over From Subconscious Yeah uh, places Pakistan, India, and uh, Bangladesh. There's people here, imams here, who are brought up here, uh, cultured here, and they know the language. They're they're from here. They're born here. They don't seem to be uh, taking on the the what is it? What's the word I'm looking for, man? The word I'm looking for is uh, intimidate. I say is mm. they don't feel that, that they can be intimidated just the way you felt. You know what I mean, you you do feel intimidated, but okay. Talking about controversials, right? Um, there was a post on Facebook that you wrote down, right, okay. about somebody attempting to bribe you. Mm. T- tell me about that. Uh, this happened. We're oh, going please, back. yeah, give me the details. Yeah, the details. juicy for us. The juicy yeah? for us. Yeah. So this we're going back uh, over a year now. So yeah, over a year. Sorry, over one and a half years now. Wow, okay. From it's the end of December 2022 now. So going back one and a half years, um, I started um, finding jobs for young Muslim lads and specifically Muslim lads that were unfortunately uh, stuck in the licensed restaurant restaurant trade. So why is that a problem to have years? So as a Muslim, um, as many already know, and I'm sure Qatar, the World Cup has really helped with yeah, this yeah. too, uh, to publicize it's, it and to make it's, people it's understand. It's quite well known. It is very well known now, isn't it? Which is for a Muslim, for us to consume, to drink alcohol, to serve alcohol, to sell alcohol is against our religion. And there is no difference of opinion there. Nothing. There's no it's difference. Unanimous. Unanimous. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter if you're, uh, you know, wh- whatever. Whatever sex you're from. Whatever school of thought you may follow. It's unanimous about all this. departments, all sects of, of, of in, in, in the religion of Islam, alcohol. Correct. Prohibited, thing that haram. We don't do. We don't drink, we don't consume, we don't sell, we don't serve. Unfortunately, uh, obviously, we've got, let's go back now 50 years where the initial uh, you know, Asian, uh, South Asian communities came, they started setting up. Now they've established a few businesses and one of the business avenues was restaurants. And because obviously then uh, back then, and it's continued where 
your consumers are your traditional white British, you know, uh, people that come to yeah. eat from yeah. these uh, places, uh, food uh, outlets. So to cater for them, isn't it? To cater for them. Exactly. So obviously, as time, you know, going, you know, talking now, 2022, going on to 2023, times have changed, you know, you can actually express and say that, no, no. No, we will give you the best Indian, Bangladeshi, Pakistani cuisines and food, and we can provide that. But with the clause that we're not going to provide alcohol, and you know, just using Qatar as an example because it's one of the most you know recent things that's yeah, happened. Yeah. You know, just statistics. You know, in terms of how much violence in respect to the previous World Cups that have happened, the shining factor. And the, literally the determining factor was alcohol. That was, alcohol wasn't allowed or mm-hmm. within the you know stadiums. Uh, no, was, no Brit was arrested. No Brit was arrested. No Brit was arrested no. in the World Cup. I don't know how many World Cups you could take. You know, and it was a poll where uh, people uh, voted asked, on voted BBC. On the right. best World Cup ever was Qatar. 70 something percent was voted as yeah. a Qatar. And that's not we're not you know we're not I talking from an Islamic because aspect. The majority of, of, of the factor is that because there was no alcohol. Yeah, they had fun. They not, you know, if I They're say that, it, it wouldn't mean much to say someone that's not Muslim. But when a non-Muslim, a person who's not affiliated with a religious intent, says that no, because of alcohol, you know, no alcohol, there was goodness. Yeah, that means a lot. That actually means that, a that lot. That speaks for itself, isn't it? Of course. When non-Muslims who grew up in the culture of drinking alcohol, you know what I mean? For to them say to that say. We enjoyed the World Cup because there was no alcohol. That says a lot. And then women, uh, the least percentage of domestic violence took place uh, this year. Because again, why? Because no one's drunk. No one's, you know, uh, drinking alcohol. Obviously here, we're not in any sort of way, you know, um, demanding that a person doesn't drink. That's, that's got nothing to do with us. No. As a Muslim, I have a responsibility though. Yep. You know, if I'm a Muslim... Um, it's my response as a Muslim to remind myself, to remind others around me that Muslim, that look, we can't drink alcohol. And in the same way, we can't serve alcohol. This is a big issue in our communities because unfortunately, we have many, many, many restaurant owners who have licensed restaurants, managers, Muslim. You know, uh, the key word here is the Muslim owners. Just to clarify, the reason why we prohibit, or Islam prohibits alcohol because it leads towards uh, violence, antisocial behavior, uh, and other crimes due to alcohol. So hence why we just derooted from from of the course. beginning. I, I mean, will, just no the Prophet alcohol. Sallallahu yeah. Alaihi Wasallam. In order to create more coherent, more harmonious uh, community. Yeah. Just to put it out there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Alhamdulillah. And uh, as you mentioned, this is a prophetic statement. You know, exactly. We know that alcohol, it, it, through that, it consists of many evils. Hence, uh, rather than, uh, you know, trying to prevent other issues, nip it in the bud. Hence, yeah. Islam says, okay, let's prohibit alcohol. And again, as we know, through Islamic history, it wasn't from day one. Alcohol was yeah. also consumed. It was, it was, slowly. was consumed slowly, 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 yeah. until the point came where now, that's it now. You know, full stop. Allah has said, End of story. It's that's it. You know, alcohol no more from this point mm. point on. And we know from the Quranic verses that that was the reality. Yeah. <clears throat> so that going back to that person, uh, because what happened? We have young lads that go to college, university, or maybe working other jobs. They want that extra part time job. So on Friday, Saturday evening, they want to go out to be a waiter yeah, in pay these is good, restaurants. Pay is good. Pay is good. Forty fifty pound a night, maybe yeah, yeah. more, depending where you work. So with that. My point was, I'm working with these lads. They're coming to the masjid. They're sitting in our programs, our events, Monday to Thursday, Monday to Friday. These same lads are saying, you know, Imam, Molana, you know, we're going out to work there now. Because you mentioned it, we didn't know. A lot of people just didn't know that it's wrong. They just thought, that, okay, that was when I'm touching shocking. it. So from, from, from our point of view, because, mm. because, because we have a, a, a religious sort of teaching background, uh, we thought, we yeah, assume it's, it's, it's that everyone, religious, knows. everyone knows, yeah. but... Most guys, uh, was some guys, don't know that no, so they obviously everyone knows it's wrong to it's, drink. It's wrong, yeah, but the the rest but the of the handling it, and handling, the selling the part, serving, not many, did they know that? Not many, unfortunately. Shocking, yeah. So when they heard, they were genuinely upset that I didn't know that I'm in this situation. So they wanted to get out of it, and through Aladab, because one of our branches of Aladab is that that we try to look for work opportunity, working opportunities for young uh, Muslims and non-Muslims in Oldham, because we're based in Oldham, where we try to find avenues of work, and especially in these testing times, it's been a difficult period, you know, post COVID, and 
with the recent you know bills energy bills rising sky high tough time right? tough people, times people are struggling and that's the reality they find any job there and they'll want to you know if if you're working Monday to Friday and you can give another 7 12 hours elsewhere they'll do it if it's yeah. extra cash they'll do it so our point was okay you need an extra job let us help you find another job so it came to the point where a few uh, you know lads uh, waiters uh, we've said to them okay you're getting 50 60 pound a night in a restaurant licensed restaurant we've got opportunities in a takeaway or in another eating place where it's a restaurant but it's a you know non licensed no alcohol and you'll still get 50 pound 60 pound a night you'll still get 40 pound a night it might be a bit less we also mentioned that maybe they can't offer the same because profit margins will be different yeah, yeah. and allah also says in the quran regarding alcohol that alcohol consists of profit so we know that but if it's you losing 10 pounds for the sake that you know that's going to be halal actually you know good wealth and risk for you what's the problem alhamdulillah all praises to god all praises to allah so many youngsters came forward shocking, when i say so shocking. many youngsters uh, you know i'll be honest with you I'm, I'm, on the off the top of my head at least 50 youngsters in that wow. period of time wow. came forward wow. saying you know we can we get in touch we're looking for a different job wow we want a different job the realization eh? and Obviously here the support and, and I, I need to mention this it wasn't ourselves it wasn't Allah it was other members of the community saying look I work in office there's five uh, five vacancies open up open uh, I'm a solicitor I work here we need two re- receptionists uh, I work here in the hospital uh, the call center part of the hospital people We've were got looking for people people were saying and hearing, they were giving hearing about your stories right and they've said uh, coming out and said I've got jobs available call please them send them send them to us wow, and that's what happened that. literally we had you know uh, lads that saturday sunday less hours less headache on the books everything's cool they've got jobs and they're happy and there's not that guilt where now you know look alhamdulillah all praises to allah it's not something that i shouldn't be doing and this support was that the, the fact that there were employers coming forward saying we've got vacancies for such a such a job please bring these lads forward wow so when this happened as you can understand there's restaurant owners losing waiters and some and specifically this person this individual uh, he started asking that you know where's my where's my staff friday night saturday night is the busiest night of, the, night, of yeah. the week friday saturday you know everyone's out you know it's you know everyone's you know they've got their you know pay slip everyone's out there they've got their wage they you know spending they they want to go out they want to eat they want to drink so he started asking that was my staff and from that specific establishment four again it might be four or five but four as far as i can remember four waiters gave their noticing we're leaving we're that's, a lot of, that's a lot of that's a lot of plus it is for one place yeah uh, we're not going to come in friday saturday so he's like why because you know we can't do this it's wrong so that person found out that okay you know what's the reason there must be a reason you know all of a sudden four of my staff members are saying they want to leave this job because we serve alcohol uh, so he started asking started questioning and obviously it came back to myself the such a such an imam in old um, atik rahman um, he's been speaking about this, he's been vocal about it and again because not a lot of people do speak about this it they was a shock why don't they coming back to the same point which is you're compromising potentially your role as an imam yeah. unfortunately unfortunately and i'm talking uh, you know a lot of our bangladeshi uh, masjids more so because i'm coming from that background yeah, yeah, yeah. i can speak for them uh, so that's what happened with this person so he's got my number he's called me and i'm i'm driving uh, driving back from my actual job uh, in the morning and he's like oh assalamu alaikum greetings uh, is this imam atik atik uh, rahman that's right and he's speaking to me you know he's speaking to me in, Bang- uh, in bengali the oh batiza you know saying you know nephew, nephew you know, yeah. out of love yeah, nephew yeah. Uh, you know you're a young lad you know mashallah uh, you know four or five of my staff members you know waiters you know these lads they've left m- my restaurant they said that you found them new jobs i go obviously i don't know which restaurant which lads i go we've been working on this area we've been you know we've been talking to young lads uh, looking for jobs for them yeah, yeah alhamdulillah quite a fair few have found new jobs because oh, no no please imam molana no yeah, yeah. you know uh, all that you know that's my four see see talk and yeah, and he thinks oh. you know you've lost me i've lost four of my waiters very typical isn't it you no know, they they serve you know i need them on the friday saturday you know no and he's like you know please you know you need to stop doing this 
know, why are you talking about this? You know, we all have to make our, uh, you know, a living. We have to do this. I go, well, it's wrong though. It's wrong. Do you know I what's wrong? I get it from their point of view. And he said it. He's, but the funny thing is like, I know, I know it's wrong. You know, he's yeah. saying, I know it's wrong, but, you know, Molana, you know, we have to do this. You know, what can we do? And he's speaking like that. I'm like, but it's wrong though, isn't it? You know, it's wrong, right? You know, these young lads, they've got the rest of their life ahead of them. Why do they need to be stuck in that trade? Why do they have to be stuck in the same trade that's been happening for 20, 30 years? They don't need that. So why are you allowing them to be in that? And then tasting that sort of life which they don't need. And then, so as then soon as I said that, I said the crooks. He's like, Imam, please look. This is between me and you. I'm going to offer you 500 pounds. I'm going to give you 500 pounds, please. I will give you that money today. Please just stop it. Was just he really offering or was he just one of those? He was actually offering. And I said, I said, I was shocked and very hurt. Shocked and hurt at the same time. Of course, of course. I'm like, wow. I go, what do you mean? He goes, please just stop talking about this. And I said it to him on the phone. I go, you know, I am going to mention this now. Because you've said this. Why am I mentioning it? Well, today you're offering 500. Imagine you're offering me 5,000. It might have been a different story. But <laughs> I, just to, at the same time, protect myself. I said, yeah, no, I'm yeah. going to mention it. Go, oh, don't mention my name. I'm, like, I'm not going to mention your name. I'm not going to mention who you are, what you are. But I'm going to mention this much. That someone from the restaurant trade, a manager and owner of a restaurant, is offering me 500 pounds just so that I don't talk about this anymore. Just so that I stop finding jobs for young Muslim lads. That really offended me. How how did the um, mosque take it? So the, because it was it was all online in, initially. It was yeah, on yeah. Facebook. Uh, it was you know it was on social media, and, and many people started sharing this uh, this incident that had happened. Um, initially, no one said anything. You know, it's nothing for them to say. It's, it's not happened. You know, True. with someone that they know. You know, it's happening in all the as long as it's not in my back my, my backyard. What matters? But it created a stir. Uh, on the other hand, and I'm going to say this too, you know, I had other very loyal friends and people that I know in Oldham that said, Molana, Imam, may Allah preserve you, may Allah protect you. You know, you do what you got to do. We will offer you as a counter offer. We will offer you a thousand pounds where you carry on doing that work. Mashallah. So I said, look, even that, that's not okay for me to accept. You know, I, I really appreciate <laughs> that you're saying this, but the reality is the reason why I put it out is because so that you know, if this was kept a secret between me and that person yeah. and he offered me 500 That's where it backfired. He could have. And not only that, say someone else came and said to me, right, you know, we'll offer you a thousand pounds. We'll mm. offer you 2,000. Yeah, yeah. And I never spoke about it. Then I could have fallen into that trap. Yeah. I, I could have just taken it and said, you know what? Okay, end of story. I've taken it. No one needs to know. Full stop. He won't talk about it. Yeah. I won't talk about it. But as soon as it happened the first time, I thought, no, I can't let this be. And then people need to know in our communities that this is to what extent a person or people are willing to go to it was a shock was just to make you shut up that's what it was so that hurt me really hurt me because I thought no and it was a test for mm. me as a personal test that oh Allah you know what do I do uh, if I you know if I fall into this you know today that's it then all this effort and all this talking about you know staying away from haram from that which Allah said to stay away from I failed I've yeah. failed as a scholar. There's, there's, there's one thing. Uh, sit on us um, uh, on the pulpit or uh, pulpit member pulpit. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Sit on the pulpit and making a sermon, saying a sermon, giving a speech, about lecturing about what you should do, what what you shouldn't do. But there's there's few out there who actually not a few out there. There's most out there, but it's not uncommon where there's few out there who don't act upon what they're saying. Mm. You know what I mean? And th that's the unfortunate thing because the. the they feel that they have to show up front to the community and they have to show some sort of <coughs> persona mm. as well. Um, how they dress, how they talk and everything else. Obviously, uh, as someone from our background, we, we can sort of, because we have a lot of experience with these people. <coughs> Sorry. We can tell who are the, who are the mm. fakers. You know what I mean? Who, who, who put on the front and who are genuine. Um, so my, my question is, what, what was the thing that the mosque was telling you not to do or how were they pressurizing you? Because loosely there was a massive controversy. The whole of them came out to, 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 to support you. Mm. Just tell me about that. So here, um, unfortunately, as is the case in many uh, communities, you know, small, we're talking the smaller communities within Oldham. Yeah, yeah. The problem is, a lot of committees, and again, um, I need to put that disclaimer out there. When I say a lot of committees, those that we've worked with, that we know of, 
they don't understand the need of the time. They don't understand that right now we have cases, we're dealing with issues where, you know, I'm dealing with cases where sisters in the community that I work with, they're messaging us, they're calling us saying that I feel suicidal. I don't have no one to go to. I don't know. I don't have anyone to talk to. I feel like this. I feel like that. We've got lads that, are, uh, that have got themselves into really bad habits. They've got no one to speak to and it's affecting them, affecting their marriage, affecting their job, affecting their family life, affecting everything. They well, can't go to- When bad habits? So for example- Is it drugs uh, related? Drugs, drugs related, alcohol related, uh, abuses of drugs, uh, drug selling also. So we've got so many things happening and they can't speak to someone. In the midst of all that is our responsibility. As an imam, a person that on a Friday where you know majority of the community will be there. By that, I mean majority of the men folk of that community are going to be there on the Friday. That last 15, 20, 10, 15 to 10 minutes, just before the, you know, the Arabic and the Salah starts, that's when everyone's here. Mm. That's the time where you need to give the message to the community. They need that weekly message. And obviously, because I'm dealing with these situations, I started speaking about, look, you know, alcohol, drugs, these things are affecting our communities. Uh, alcohol, i.e. You know, selling alcohol. You guys are not understanding, but this is affecting our young lads. The young lads that were waiters that were just serving alcohol, they've done it for five, six years now on Christmas Eve, on New Year's Eve. <coughs> not only are they serving alcohol now, they've gone to that stage where now they're drinking alcohol. They're around it. So, you know, if you're around something for that long, you're not just going to serve you. And, you know, you, you want to see what it tastes like. You exactly, want to see yeah. what it is. Yeah. And when it, get, when it went down that route, we're losing people. On top of that, what's the schedule? You're leaving your house half three, four o'clock. Latest is four. Yeah. In the afternoon, late afternoon. If you've got kids, your kid just came back from school at three o'clock, half three. You've probably seen your kid for 10, 15, 20 minutes. And now you're gone off to work. You're going to come back home at 12 o'clock, one o'clock, maybe two o'clock on a busy night. Your kid is in bed, asleep. You get one day off, maybe a Monday, maybe a Tuesday, maybe a Wednesday. It's always a weekday. It? It's always a weekday because that's the days that it's not as busy. <laughs> You're seeing your kid for what, 12 hours from the whole week. And now that kid is seeing that my father, my uncle, my brother is going to work. He's working in this. Where is he working? That child is losing you. You're not spending time with that child. And as soon as you say that, you're offending people. As soon as you're saying that on the member, on the, you know, on the Friday sermon where, you know, we're not spending time with our children. You know, we're going away that time, that chunk of time where we're not, we're not there for them. We're sleeping, you know, some are just about doing the morning drop-offs. It's obviously when you've got, you know, fathers, uncles, brothers, that are not seeing their children, mm. then you need to look at the root causes. Yeah. So it's not just a job. From an Islamic perspective, it's, you know, you're going away, you're involved in that which is not making Allah happy. The the crux of it is Allah yeah. is not happy with this sort of risk. You're coming back, you're spending on your children with this money, with this wealth, which is haram. You know, th there's no other way about it. Yeah. That risk is haram, that wealth is haram. That, that's a forbidden income. Forbidden income, uh, which Allah has prohibited. So now with that, what do you expect from our communities? What do you expect from these young children? So now when you're mentioning that on a Friday, you can imagine, you know, how many people technically you're offending. You're offending either restaurant owners, you're offending the senior waiters or the senior chefs and the senior tandoori chefs of these places. Yeah, yeah. And they're feeling it. But the reality is at the same time, they can't say to you, no one will challenge you and say, oh, why are you saying that? You know, imagine I said something wrong, yeah. which is, you know, not uh, Islamically <coughs> is okay. And I, I all of a sudden said something so wrong. Uproar. The uproar. The, who, who's the, what's the As is saying? the community where? Of course. There'd be an uproar. There would have been. Yeah. Well, here in front of me, they can't say anything. They can't because they're tied down. Because the point is, he's, he's, he's right. What are we going to say? You're, saying, you're not saying, saying something wrong. You can't stop me and say on that point, oh, you've said something wrong. Yeah. It's not that. It's the fact that you're saying it, but you're offending the community. <coughs> so my point, and I, again, I say this on my Friday sermons. I always put the disclaimer, look, it's not an attack on anyone. I care. I have concern for yourselves, for your children. And your children, we're dealing with your children. You know, we teach your children. They come to our lessons. They sit in the masjid. We do activities for your children. We are seeing what the problem is. We are seeing the fact that lack of uh, fatherhood, the lack of parent supervision, what it's, what's, what it's caused in the community. 
Why, how it's changing your children, you know, buying your child a few presents and, you know, one day going out and think, thinking that we've done it now, that, that doesn't solve the problem. No. That doesn't it? solve anything. <coughs> and with these children, alhamdulillah, you know, all praises to Allah, these children realize now too. So some children, you know, we're talking a child that's 12, 13, 14, you know, in their lessons, they're learning about halal, haram, that which Allah said you can do, that which Allah said that you shouldn't do. Uh, you know, finding avenues of wealth, uh, giving them career advice. You know, we offer career advice. We say, you know, go, you know, venture, do this, do that, try this, try that. Yeah, explore. And the children, they ask. That, so, you know, restaurant, alcohol, alcohol is haram. So, you know, there'll be a hadith, you know, statements of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that way, look, it's wrong, serving alcohol, uh, you know, selling alcohol, the container to, uh, you know, escort the alcohol, this with alcohol, this, this, it's wrong. So then that child whose father happens to be a restaurant <coughs> owner, or that child whose father happens to work in a restaurant, licensed restaurant, they say that that means my father's doing wrong. That means that my father or my brother, my uncle, they're doing wrong. The thing is, from the father's point of view, right, they're doing the job as to provide for their family. You know what I mean? It's not a job that they want. It's a job that they know. They can't do any of the job. You know what I mean? Okay. Again, <coughs> see, um, this is one of the issues that I personally thought would come up, which is, you know, okay, so what do we do then? That's all we know. So the reality is... They've been in the industry for 20 years. Of course, 100% agree. but. You still, you'll still be a chef in another establishment that doesn't sell alcohol. You'll still be a chef in a takeaway that's doing, you know, maybe half the uh, profit or it's half the headache. Is you're still getting the same wage? You'll still get that. And at the same time, Alhamdulillah, we have also found jobs for such people, such individuals who say and have said that I've been working this trade for that many hours. This is my timetable. This is my shift. I want a morning job that, you know, I'll start in the morning, finish and I'm done. I've got my kids in the uh, evening. I'm with them. They're with me. We found jobs at Park Cakes. It's a factory setting, making cakes, baking cakes. We found people with them jobs. There's been, you know, vacancies for that. We found that for them. There's been cleaning jobs that are offering the same money that you are getting in yeah. that trade. You're getting the same money officially on a normal nine till five timetable, for example, mm. from Monday to Friday. You're getting that with the privileges of, you know, your break times. If you've got uh, special prayers that you need to attend and you need to make everything included. That's amazing. Yeah, everything. Amazing. I, I, and I've said that you to do, so you, many you uncles. That, yeah. that. But the thing is, <clears throat> Those kids who have fathers and uncles who are in the restaurant business, right? Those kids grew up not having a male figure in the household. They've only had their mother who was doing a lot of things. You know what I mean? Doing doing more than she can bear, really. With three kids, four kids, whatever. You know what I mean? Two, even two kids is, is more than unbearable. Uh, and, and those kids, those boys and girls, not having a male uh, mm. role in the, in the uh, household, what sort of affect that? That, that could have for a child. Because we're, we're seeing it. The effect that it's ha having on the children is, obviously you've got uh, behavior issues. Uh, you've got these children that are going out exploring drugs, exploring alcohol, exploring laughing gas, exploring this, that. They're spending their evenings outside because no one's going to tell yeah. you off. Suppose, suppose... Uh, Dad's at work till one. Suppose a 10, 11 year old, right, uh, did something wrong, right? That was worthy of Getting a beat, yeah. <laughs> Let's just say. Now, if a mother came, how how often does a son of an 11, 12 year old nowadays, yeah, listen to the parents? Uh, mother. They don't. They don't. They they need that male somebody, mm. their father, to tell them what they're doing. And obviously, you're not there. If you're not there, if the you're father not there, there, what do you expect from that child? Yeah. And then even say, say a child, um, is going, say, to supplementary school in a maktab. They're going to an evening class. They've come home seven o'clock. They're going to get to bed for nine o'clock, 10 o'clock. There, there was a chance there to speak. There was a chance there to ask your child, how's everything going? How's school? How's uh, your studies? How's this? How's that? They don't get that. And now the best way to keep them distracted, games. They're talking to people Forget online. Forget games. Forget games. These kids are outside on the streets. A lot of them are. They are on the streets, yeah. Uh, and they're causing havoc. Yeah. Especially in the summertime. Probably the winter time they're playing games online. And 
you have no idea what the no supervision. Like, we don't who know who they're talking to. We don't know how old those kids are, girls and boys. You know what I mean? 100%. What they're doing up? What what they're up to? They just left free. Mm. Our parents are losing the control over them. So, from a, again Islamic perspective, our point was that, and that has been a. But the know, root is alcohol, isn't it? The root is alcohol. Yes. Having a forbidden income. The blessings. You're and the deprived of the blessing and the timetable and everything, and everything that is affecting. It's affecting yeah. everything. So when you're saying that, imagine you know someone that's involved in that. You, you know you will no matter how sweet, no matter how much you, you will offend them. You will offend them. Yeah. And that offense they can't say in front of you. So the way to go about it is okay. We, we can't have this. We need to get rid of him. Yeah. We can't work with him because he's saying these things. And the reality, because there's some sort of change was was and is happening where these youngsters, the you know the 18 year old, the 19 year old that used to work Friday Saturday, they've backed away. So you've lost your waiters. You've lost workers. On top of that, these children now know that it's wrong to do this. So now they feel bad about it. They, they're not okay working in these environments anymore. They know this much that it's wrong. So they moved on. They moved on, and they are moving on. Yeah. So you're because of one imam, you're losing staff, you're losing, you know, people wanting to come to these uh, places, and on top of that, Muslim people, you know, that would normally go eat in such places. As soon as you've made a few aware, you know, we've re- received responses. They're like, you know, Imam Sab, I'm not going to go eat there anymore. I understand it. I understand it now. It's not okay for me to eat there. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to support such an establishment. Yeah. I'm not going to support such an you know food outlet. Yeah. You're affecting someone's business. But they still don't get it. A lot of people don't get it. And here, again, it's not an attack. It was never an attack. It's not an attack on an individual. No, I'm not going to start pointing fingers out. Okay, you're in this, you're in this, you're in this. We're not doing that. Mm. We're giving the message. And again, the prophetic way is, you know, وَمَا عَلَيْنَا إِلَّا الْبَلَغْ that it's upon us just to give that message. Yeah, that's all we are. And that's all. And we are just messengers. Not, and we'll remind. <coughs> and we'll, we'll carry on reminding. It's not that we're just going to say it once. We're seeing it as an issue. We'll remind. There's issues within our community. We'll raise it. That we want goodness for our community. You know, me sitting on the pulpit, on the member, on a Friday, it's not just a sweet talk. Do you, do you think integrity is a rare commodity nowadays? It can be, unfortunately, yes. I think yes. it is. Yes, yes. I think it is. Amongst people who are, who, who are in power, it's, a, it's integrity, they stick by what you believe in, it's a rare commodity. It is, it is. And it's, That's why all of them are losing. That's why the majority of communities in our, I don't know, Asian communities all over the country are losing out. There's that fear of a backlash, they're, isn't there? They're selling themselves out. There's a fear. There's an element of fear. And the fear of what's going to happen. And myself... You know, whenever I speak of these things, I know there will be some sort of ripple effect. It reminds me of a thingy, an individual who's recently become Muslim, one of our brothers. Okay. Andrew yes, yes. Tate. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> I know Andrew Tate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I think I know how you feel about him anyway, but I'm going to ask you, what do you think about him? I'll be very honest with you. Go um, for it. Honestly, I don't know much about Andrew Tate. You don't? Surprisingly, I actually don't know much about him. Okay. By that I mean, uh, I've only recently heard of him since the recent uh, things that have been said about him. Uh, I've known that a lot of youngsters follow him, they watch his videos, but I don't know his background. Yeah. Uh, in terms he, of, I have He's been accused of it. misogyny. Um, I don't know why else. I think the main thing is misogyny, right? Mm. Uh, the and feminists hate him. Obviously, right? I've heard yeah. that he recently, uh, you know, converted to Islam yeah. and become a Muslim. He, he recently converted uh, to Islam and he also recently got arrested. And he, okay. he, he foresaw all this. Right? He foresaw all this because once you come to it, because uh, obviously he was trying to, in, in his own way, I may not agree with his method and everything else, but mm. in, in, in his own way, to modern young men, <clears throat> he was trying to empower them with wisdom and knowledge, right? Whatever, in, in his own way. And once... Uh, YouTube and all the social media websites try to cancel him. They thought they'll they'll somehow get get rid of him, make him more famous, right? Okay. No matter what, but he keep more famous. And then once the cancellation didn't work out, the whole you know matrix that he calls it, um, he got arrested recently. And obviously, he he's he's foretelling that this is the route that that people of influence uh, have to take. It's either you get cancelled, you get arrested, they frame you for something, and then they kill you. So that, the one they've done, 
Number two is now just recently been happening mm. where he got arrested. Then now he thinks that he'll be framed for something and then he'll, he'll get killed. So obviously, so um, we live in a weird world, a weird world. Mm. You know what I mean? Very weird world. Islamically, in our Islamic history, young young men. Talk about young men who follow these individuals. I don't think they should follow him, mm. but who else is there? Who else young men can find a role model? We don't, yeah. we don't have a role model, proper role model. Who else is there? Very true. Because the the thing about I I I have an issue with personally, right? <clears throat> Where how I grew up. I grew up in a very rough, uh, rough and tumble sort of environment, right? Struggling, uh, not struggling, but you know, on the street sort of thing, uh, crime, violence, and some sort of dabbling drugs as well. I mean, I didn't relate to any of these sort of scholars. Nothing, none of it. You know what I mean? What were those saying in the member? Mate, took it over my head. There was no relation. There's no, I knew, I knew what those things was good, just, just to be connected with them. So, I found somebody who, are, the, pe- the people who I found role models were gangsters. You know what I mean? People who, mm. who fought on it, you know I mean, had a bit of a swag on them, you know, who life. talked well, you know, bit of a, you know, hit it there, had a bit of girls here and there as well. Mm. Those were my role models. Now, Back in those days, if my mum wasn't as strict as she was, <laughs> I would I would be a different different uh, a different individual. R- using that as an experience, nowadays there's kids, young teenagers out there who don't relate to any ulama or relate to any alim, any scholar. These kids are into violence, into drugs more than I can even imagine. They're into girls, they're into violence, they're into crime, and all these things. They're even killing as well, right? Mm. There were near, um, there was a near um, murder attempt with some guys with girl issues, right? You know what I mean? There was a god oh, yes. beef with that. Yes, yes. Quite recently, quite recently, yeah. The guy nearly died. Mm. They nearly broke his back. Mm. This is what we're going through, right? We can all, these all be offended about this, yeah? Mm. We can all sit in the mosque, yeah? And <clears throat> sit in the warm, in a, in a warm, Carpeted in the, in the so places, look. all decorated in a, a lavish, uh, highly overspent mosque, right? Mm. And trying to be all good and well. That, that you said your bit, and I say, so you feel good. All the guys, all the kids who are coming to the mosque are come from good families. So you're not actually fixing anybody. You know what I mean? They're just the ones who are already seeking the truth or mm. seeking some sort of uh, peace and tranquility or redemption, whatever it is. Those guys who want the streets, yeah, causing crime, causing uh, causing havoc, uh, antisocial behavior, abusing mm. whoever they want to abuse. Who the hell's helping them? The system isn't. No. The government isn't. So and, he, and by the way, mm. I suggested an outreach program with a, with an with, with an organization a long time back. Yeah, I'm not really sure if I if, if I should mention this, but you know who. <clears throat> uh, and I and I suggested it. They all said it was a good idea. It was a good idea. It was a good idea. Nobody stepped forward. Nice. Nobody stepped forward, man. I went alone. Mm. Talk to you know, talk to the guys. Obviously, I look very uh, scholarly, or the guys that they deem. But once they start talking to me, and they start sort of knowing who I am, how I speak and what the experiences are and seeing through all the bullshit, yeah? Mm. You know what I mean? It's all I said, he's one of us type. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But who's good after them? So you know with that, um, one of the methods that I've tried to adopt is, and again, I, I start thinking, uh, shaking too many baskets here, which is, typical mosque, you need to wear a hat, totally, yeah. to walk in. So, you know, especially where I work, if a kid walks in without OP, the first thing they do is, oh, where a hat, where a hat. So I've had to publicly make an announcement that leave them alone. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they've got this haircut, that haircut. It doesn't matter if they're not Just wearing a random that hat. kid who walks in the mosque, Let right? them be, let him pray. He's coming <clears throat> and Because our sessions, we involve food, snacks, tea, especially through winter, we have tea, snacks, uh, hot cuppers and everything, you know, uh, you know, yeah, chocolate, you have everything. Activities, you have activities. activities, yeah. We've got lads off the street that are coming in now. And with them, never have we said anything to the, you know, how they dress, uh, if it's okay, if it's not, you know, we've got lads coming in with, you know, uh, you know, with whatever statements they have with t-shirts on. Some lads are coming in with earrings on and that would be deemed completely incorrect in a typical mosque setting. Yeah. But we're saying, no, come in. Well, it's okay. 
We, you know, you come in for that cup of tea. You don't do it at right now. Well, that's not what we want from you. We just want you come. Come here. You know, come here. If it's tea, brew, yeah. just, just a brew. That's all we want from you. We don't, you don't need to listen to anything, but we just want to see. And because of that now, I'll go through the community that I work in. As soon as I'm walking through, I'm driving through Imam Sab. They know Imam Sab. Yeah, yeah. That's it. They know Imam Sab. Someone, you know, we've had issues where a young lad, he's passed away. He's passed away. Um, he's been stabbed. So he's, you know, because of that, he's passed away. That Friday, we had a program. When I say the masjid, the mosque was ram-packed with lads off the street. Why? We're going to make a special prayer for that young lad that got stabbed and died. And at the same time, we're going to talk. And when they came in, I said, brothers, look, this was happened. This is the street life. This was happened. Now we need to do something about it. Them same lads, we're talking two, three years ago, pre-COVID, something happened. Same lads now, a group of them are like, you know what? We're still going to come. Friday, it's such an established thing, you know, as we've mentioned about al and how we do these Friday lessons, because it's grown to that level now. You know, a person can come in January and inshallah, you know, God willing, come back in March, you'll still have that same Friday program going on. It doesn't matter if you haven't come one week, if you've missed five weeks, yeah. come in, you're going to have that same cup of tea, you're going to have the same service, <coughs> we're going to give everything to you. Again, that, there's a problem there for some people. Guess what the problem is? What? He doesn't wear a mosque hat. Oh my God. But th these guys, look at the way he's dressed. Look at the way he's, look at his attitude. These guys deal with this, deal with that. They don't get it. You know, forget asking them to wear a mosque. They've come to the mosque. The last place where you expected that kid and that teenager and that lad to come into, he's come in now. If we don't open our arms, hence the drug dealer that's parked up two streets away, he said, come. What do you want? Let's go out for a meal. Let's, we'll take you out for a meal. We'll do this for you. They're opening their arms. So where do you expect that kid to go? Where do you expect that kid to go? That's the yeah. reality. But our problem, as you know, you've mentioned it too, is we sat there in the mosque. You know, as long as we're here, as long as we've come and we've ticked the box, uh, the, you know, ticked the box. I feel good. I feel good. End of story. Good. Doesn't matter if everything, everyone around me is being I've destroyed. I've done my job. I've done my job. Hmm. And we're not happy with that. Not. And because we're vocal about it, you're a threat now. What's the threat? Oh, he's bringing in youth to the mosque. You're, oh, you're, 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 you're making him look bad. Yeah, because now, you know, how, how, how is he along the, all our life we've said that make sure you wear a hat when you come to the mosque. We'll deal with that later. We don't need to deal with that right now. Right now, we just want him to come inside. You know, or uh, they, they give food in the mosque. They give tea and snacks and everything and chocolate and, you know, samosas and this and that to the, to <laughs> is the that, lads. Is that really an issue, yeah? It's an issue. Oh my God. So why are they doing that? So, yo, food is, the, you know, it's the way to the man's heart. You know, that's the way you play it. That's the way you do it. But it's not a good thing. And that's where you are a problem. And unfortunately, and this, I'm not talking myself here. Uh, mashallah, we've got many established uh, imams around all them. When you're established, you become a threat. Because now uh, the community is on your side. You, you nearly got cancelled. Yep. Tell me about that. It's these issues. It's, what happened uh, leading up to your cancellation, let's just say? It's, Imam is speaking about these issues on the Friday. He is uh, vocal. He's talking about uh, the wrongs of selling alcohol. And at the same time, um, he's not committed to the role. By that meaning, I am not a dedicated Imam six days a week. Or That's, seven what days a week. It? That's what they're saying. That's what they're saying. That you're not here five, six, seven days a week. We want you to be here five, six. And I've been in this role for six years now. Uh, I've come in with, what, as I've mentioned before, I've come in laying out everything on the table. That this, this is my actual, I've got a job. I'm a teacher by profession. I'm a teacher. I do this. I do that. I've got a job. This is me giving back to the community. Right. This is me doing that to serve the deen, to right. serve Islam, uh, to serve the, the community of all them. So they what happened? It's, you know... We need someone that can, you know, dedicate full time to us and leave everything else. It doesn't work like that. I'm not going to come here. You're not going to be able to pay me what, what I need to be paid to look after my family. I've got a family of three young children. I've got my wife. I've got my father. I've got my siblings. No, it doesn't work like that. So I'm not going to commit to a full time, six day a week role where I'm stuck and I'm tied down to one role and one position. I'm sorry. It doesn't work like that. I didn't come in with that. I'm not changing uh, my part of 
uh, my contract in any sort of way. So that's the problem. And I, that was I the heard problem. when when the people of Oldham heard this, there was a massive there was uprop, uh, absolute protest about it. All praise belongs to Allah. Uh, it's not in any sort of way anything from our side. It's the position and honor that Allah has given us, and we praise Allah for that honor, and we appreciate it, and we also recognize that this is from Allah. If you're trying to make some sort of change in a community, and the community is seeing that change, you're going to get backlash, but you're going to get the support of the community. Yeah. And again, that's a threat. You're a threat because now, if anything happens, as has happened here, it's the community. Me being in my position right now, you know, on you know, complete honestly, honesty, it's not about me serving a mosque or a committee. It is wholeheartedly to serve a community. Exactly, it's the community that want me to be there, and it's my job there and my responsibility to serve that community. That community have seen some sort of change in the last five, six years that I've been with them. Being with them the last five, six years, of course, there's been changes. You know, I, I myself can say that to you that there has been changes, good changes. You know, we're, we're interacting, we're speaking to the youth, we're trying to do something. As soon as you try to take that away, you're hurting people, and people don't like that. There, Alhamdulillah, the uproar people support it, and I am honestly well, truly support, humbled because you you have a very small audience, but those audience. No, no, no. I, I wouldn't say small. I say we large as well, but they're very loyal. Mm. Very, very loyal. I was truly humble. I mean, truly humble. You're, 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 a, you're, a, you're someone to that that the community needs. You know what I mean? Alhamdulillah, I was very truly humble, and uh, obviously, all praises to Allah. And uh, you know, you're not grateful to Allah if not grateful to the people. So I am completely, uh, yeah. truly grateful to all those that stood to the extent. You know, I was meant to get a formal notice on a certain prayer. You know, we had lads coming in. Specifically from different communities, just to attend the mosque to come for that prayer, just so that they can say no. Protest. He's, he's not going to get that, uh, you know, notice. Yeah, yeah. To that extent. So what happened? Did you? Did you... They had to revoke. They, they couldn't uh, take it forward. Uh, alhamdulillah, things settled. Uh, I think the reality was that the community has a has a powerful, powerful voice. But why stay there then? Okay, very good question. Um, why I'm serving? If the if the community, not community, if the committee. Once you're gone, and they've expressed that now, right? Clearly, mm. why stay there? For the community, the community mean too much to me. Uh, in that whole uh, two, three weeks of you know everything that happened, I was offered other institutes, other mosques. Said Molana Imam, whatever you're doing there, lift it rapidly, it in our place. We will give you X, Y, and Z. We will you know this is what we'll offer you. Please come over. And this, you know, without exaggeration, about four places offered me a role. That come over here, do your work here, and do whatever course, you're doing. We'll, course, we'll come yeah. here. And my reply to everyone was the same, and I'll, I'll share that with you. I said to everyone that you know, you could offer me a job, you could offer me, you know, a better pay, a better this, a better everything, but no one can offer me that love that that community have offered me. That is priceless. What they have given me as a community to stand for me in that sort of way, that is priceless. You can't buy that. That's been you? five, six years. You can't that, buy that. You can offer me, you know, a million pounds. MPs crave that. Councillors crave that. I, I can't. But you can't buy I can't, it. I can't sell that. And I can't buy, you can't buy that and you I can't, can't sell that. It. You could offer me the money in the world. I'm not willing to let go of that love that for the community. And with love, that's where effort works. With love, you can help a community to understand, look guys, we need to do something. We need to progress. And that's where help and Alhamdulillah, you know, all praises to Allah. That's where progress happens from. You're, you're a man of rare quality. I mean, man of rare quality. May but Allah make I it reality. Your, I mean, I want your opinion because you have a uh, you also have a department in your Al Adab uh, mm. organization of marriages. That's right. You, you, why is it? You perform marriages for we, people, isn't it? We offer a nikah service, yes. Yeah. Um, a mobile nikah service where we are willing to come to you rather than you coming to us, we will offer the setting to you. Okay, okay. Mm. Um, now, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of stories behind why you should do it. I'm sure you have a lot of backlash behind that as well. Mm. I want your opinion in regards to when two people, male and female, young women, you know, young, you know, you know what I mean? Uh, young deemed as in the Western culture, say 20, 21, 22, 23, right? Okay. Male and female, boys and girls. Want to get married without the parents' consent or blessing? Would you still allow them to get married? 
because this department of Allah Dabnika, it's merged with my role as an imam also. So I've dealt with, uh, you know, scenarios and cases where, uh, very, you know, you'd be surprised a lot of cases with this sort of situation where, you know, groom, bride to be, they want to be together. They want to do it halal, i.e. Yeah. the Islamic sort of concept. They want to be together. So with, rather than be the boyfriend and girlfriend, well, they want to and be do husband it at and the wife. Lock, they yes. want to just lock it in and, and they want be to be husband and wife. Husband and wife, exactly. Islamically, yeah. Islamically. So there, again, the typical reasons that parents show is, oh, you know, they're still studying, or he's not got a good full time job, or she's not ready. She's too young, even though she's 21, 22. She's or he'll too get married to whoever I choose. Or he'll or get, she'll get married to, to whoever I choose. Yeah, or he's fixed elsewhere, or yeah. she's fixed, you know, back home, or, you know, Typical sort of scenarios. So there, the crux of it is, and I, I, I say this to the, you know, the, the, the young, ma the young gentleman and the young lady. I'll say to them, right? Do you want to be together? Yes. So why have you come? Why have you come to the imam? So their point would be, look, we've been dating, you know, you know, for the last two years or three years, we've realized that it's strong. So we want to make it okay and good and halal now. Yeah. So that is such a praiseworthy trait. You know, in an era where we're living where you you can just carry on. Just carry yeah. on being boyfriend, girlfriend. You can. What's stopping you? Carry on chilling out. Carry on till, you know, for 10 years date. But for someone like that, for, for a young lad and for a young girl to come forward and say, look, we've been together for two, three years. We're not happy in this because we know it's still wrong. For me, that's... In the eyes of the Lord. In the eyes of we're, Allah. We're not doing good. We're not doing good. That's such a... You know, that's a praiseworthy quality and trait within To come to that realisation to is, a, realize is a that it's very so, praiseworthy Oh, 100%. Thing, yeah. De definitely. And that we portray to the parents. So we will, I, you know, I, I'll take response. I'll say to the parents, look, your child isn't saying to do something in secret. Your child, you, know, you call them your child. This child of yours wants to do halal. You're saying, well, they don't understand. They don't do this. But that's not the point. They've come forward because they've realized they're doing something wrong in the eyes of Allah, in the eyes of God, Islamically. Now they want to make it right. You're meant to be happy for your child. This child wants to do good. Then, you know, the uh, issues of, you know, uh, finance and career and stuff. When has a nikah ever stopped a person in finance and in, you know, in a career? Because normally what happens, because normally what happens is that when they... Um, try to follow their parents' wishes. Mm. They first get a job, they get settled down, they buy a house, or they. It, so if they have elderly parents, they look after them for a while, uh, or get real settled in. By the time then, they're about 27, 28, right? That's about late. So, about, so by the time they get married and have kids, they're about 31. You know so what I mean? Again, my compromised opinion on that is if you're not involved with someone, if you have taken on that traditional rule where, okay, I'm not going to get involved. I don't want to think about girls. I don't want to think about guys. I don't want to think about marriage. I'm going to do my career. I'm going to get my job. I'm going to look after my parents. I'm 27, 28. Now I want to settle down. You know what? Good on you. If that is the case. But the reality is 80% of those that we deal with, the reality is no, they've they're, got someone. They're fooling around. They're already in a relationship. You know, they're already gone to the extent where they're doing a lot, which would be deemed completely wrong in Islam. You know, they're, they're doing those things that it's not just holding hands anymore. We've gone past that stage. It's not just a kiss on the lip or a kiss on the cheek. We've gone beyond that. It's gone beyond that now. So if they're coming forward and they're telling us this, we need to help them. We need to help make it right. You know, if you're going to say that, oh, it's haram and, you know, dump your girlfriend or dump your boyfriend and end it. At that age, I'm sorry, they're not going to understand that. You can say that 10 times over to, to that person. They're not going to understand that from you. At that moment, it's about working with them. And if they have come to the point that it's, the solution is marriage, then we're going to support that. Because in some cases, I'm not going to mention names, but as a case, you know, X, Y, we've dealt with a case where personally, she, she wants to get married. She's found someone. She spoke to her father. The father's come to me. Imam, my daughter, she's only 19, 20. She's found someone. She's started university. She's very young. Okay. Uh, you know, please explain to her. So we've spoken to her, you know, you know, do you, are you serious? Are you sure you're ready for this commitment? You know, you're 19, 20. You know, are you ready for this? She goes, yes, I am. I said, okay. So I've gone back to the father. No, she's ready. No, 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 no. I don't care. No, no, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So when you've got that sort of hindrance, it's very difficult. Right. So what's happened here? This girl, you know, this particular case, 
Well, guess what she's done? They've gone back and now she's come back six months later. She said to her father, you know what? If you don't do it, I'm walking out. If you don't let me marry you know, the guy that I want to marry, I'm walking out. So, you know, father's like, no, no, what do you mean? No, I'm not going to let you marry him. Okay, let me just let you know I'm also three months pregnant. Whoa. Whoa. And now, same father, six months later on the phone, Imam Saab crying. Imam Saab, what's she doing? Look what's happened. She's expecting a child. We need to do the nikah quick now. Uh-huh. Because, you know, because and literally, he's, the he's giving me, turned. and he's giving me a plan that if we do it now, you know, within, uh, she's already three months pregnant. So within six months, we can say uh, the baby was early, premature baby. The baby came early. This happened, that happened. We, we can cover it. So I'm thinking, Allah, wow. It's all about uh, point Keeping, forward, our uh, persona to the public in it. That, the, oh, everything was good. It's all about protecting it. your reputation. And I said to that father, you know, I said, look. So you know, three months back, six months back when we first spoke, what did I say to you then that this, you know, she's committed. She wants to be with this guy. He's a Muslim. You know, you, if you want to tick the traditional boxes, we've ticked them all. You know, you're from the same ethnic background. Tick, tick, tick. He's Muslim. She's Muslim. They're, you know, they're similar age. Respectable tick, tick, family. Tick, respectable same family. village. Whatever. You know, it's, it's even, you know, forget the same village, but <laughs> enough. You know, they've ticked a fair few it plays boxes. The part, God. It plays about, but they've ticked the boxes. Still, but it had to go to that extent. We've had cases, again, I've dealt with the case where uh, the girl, she's, she's run away. She's actually run away from home. She ran away from home. She went to live with one of her aunties and she refused to come back home until the parents agreed to allow her to marry the, the young man that she wants to get married to. So after all of that drama, as we call it proper drama, after oh, yeah. all of that drama, it still came to the same point. They're going to get married. So why not work with that child? Okay, you feel like the guy, you know, it's not the right guy. You know, your do- you've got a daughter. I've got two daughters. You know, yourself, you've, you know, you know, Allah's blessed us with daughters. If he came and I thought that this, you know, this lad's not good for my daughter, I'll sit down. I'll yeah. explain to him, look, you know. We'll vet him. We'll vet at him. Least. And we'll also explain to our daughters that, you know, no, maybe not him. Yeah. Are you sure? Are you sure? Let's consider it. Let's consider yeah. this. Have you thought about this? You know, please, it's the rest of your life ahead. You know, blah, blah, blah. You'll say all that. And then... You you give you a reason as to why he's yes. the right person, and even after that though, if she still says no, I want to marry him, then now as a parent, I need to literally bite my teeth and say, you know what? Okay, I've given my part. I've tried to explain to my child. He or she still wants to go ahead. You know what? Have my blessings. Go ahead with it. But know that I've warned you. Yeah. So if you no know, fast forward two years, if something goes wrong, and again, because we've dealt with that many nikas, things do go wrong. It's not a perfect world. We've had cases where we've had young couples, 21, 22, get married. Two years later, they've realized they can't do it and a divorce has taken place. It's happened. But they're doing it within the um, laws, are they? Of course. Within the boundaries, within the process. Yes, you yes. Know what I mean? Which is fine and, 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 and understandable. Happens, and divorce happens anyway, though. Yeah. It's not here. Yes, Even if you do it the right way. way if you do it the right way, it's still gonna, it still happens sometimes. Yeah. And compatibility is not there. Whatever's happened in between that time, okay, they've ended it. But they've experienced that was their mistake to make, though. That was their lesson to learn. If it was something for them to learn, I wouldn't even go further. I wouldn't go further. It's a, it was the parents' responsibility to instill those sort of trust between the father and daughter. Of course. But the, if the daughter doesn't trust his fa- her father's judgment as to how men, how boys are, then the then the girl would go out and make her own judgment. So that bond between the father and, and daughter has to be proper, 100%. and and I don't mean in a in a strict way. I mean in a trusting, mm. loving way. See, I mean? my summary to that would be: we've grown up with parents where we couldn't we couldn't do that. We couldn't no, speak to our parents. Not, of course no. not. You're gonna get a slap. You know you can't, you can't do that. They don't talk. They smack. <laughs> Sorry, who? What? You know you can't do that. You said what? <laughs> what was she called again? <laughs> Say that again? No, no, you know. By the by the second slap, you've forgotten the name. You forgot. <laughs> That's it. Don't and my is what you've just said. My belief is, you know, if, you know, if I'm in a situation, I want my daughter, 18-year-old daughter, to come and say to me, Dad, uh, you know, I found someone or I, I I've got interest in someone. What do you think? What should I do? That's the sort of relationship we need to do that with our kids now. Yeah. Because if we don't do that, then what's going to happen? They're going to do everything behind our backs. And when we did things behind our parents' backs, there was a limit though. The, the you know, the environment, the culture, the <coughs> sort of era that we lived in. The community in. was there to back everybody you, up. You, know, you, couldn't, you, know I mean? you couldn't do much. No. Now. Word spreads. 
Word spreads and you're not you're not gonna go anywhere, do anything as else. As soon as you saw someone in the distance, yeah, that's finished. That's it. He's gonna run into somebody else yeah, that's and it. tell somebody else. And before and before it. you're home, your mom and dad know about With it. With a stick ready. You're ready. <laughs> <laughs> you're not coming back home. But now they'll do it. Social media, every child by the age of 14, 15, unfortunately, they've got a smartphone. They're, not even they're on Snapchat, it. they're on Instagram, they're in, talking to whoever, in open, whatever. Yeah. In the open. What can parents do? And you can't completely limit because say you try to completely restrict your child, they're going to go to school. It'll backfire. They're going to go to college. They're going to see others and then they're going to say, you stopped me from all of this. They'll, they'll just go on a different, you know, a rebellion ship. Of course. Yeah. There has to be that communication. We have to. And I'm not talking about my personal kids only. I'm talking about as an imam, these children that I deal with, that's what I want from them. And Last five, six years, that's what we've been doing. You know, we've had cases, a child in college will come and say that, you know, I fancy this girl, what do I do? How do I go about it? You know, and oh, we don't just say, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, you know, something like, oh, you know. Go to the mosque. Are you sure she's paid? for five days. Yeah. <laughs> stay in the gaff. You know, stay over in the mosque. You know, we'll, you know as, a, as a joke, we'll say stuff like, you know, um, she, are you sure she's pretty? You know, are you sure, are you sure you've got herself, you know, are you, 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 you found her. You, you're, you're doing really well, aren't you? You have to yeah. let them understand that we're there for them. And yeah. we had that, you know, growing up, we started having that era of teachers that spoke English, that went through school, that went through college. So when we spoke about these issues to our teachers, they, they understood it, they yeah. got it. And, you know, you know they, they understood that times have changed now. That's what we need for our children. That's what we need for our youth. Our youth need to know that they can come to the imam and they can spill their hearts out. It's you know? hard. It's hard, man. It's hard for very hard for a teenager, young boy 100%, and girl 100%. to to refrain from such a, such uh, temptations. You know, what I mean, 100%. it's hard. And most of them, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, just call it out now. Most of them fall into that. Yes, and not everybody is strong enough. Hundred you know percent. I mean, to and if they are falling into it, mm. listen, don't abandon them. You know what I mean, help them, help guide them. them. They may learn the lesson afterwards, yeah. but don't abandon them. Don't abandon them. Don't just criticize, judge them, and just 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 call yeah. them names, whatever. No. Call them out, put them to the side, talk to them, see what they're actually thinking about. And you know what's the most upsetting thing about this? You know, the youth that we work with, the girls, the guys that we are working with as an imam, it's the very community members, committee members, the very elders that Ooh. don't like Ooh. us or don't like what we are doing. We're helping your kids. We're helping your grandkids. It's actually, it's actually the funny part is, yeah, Crazy. Those, those committee members, it's their kids who are involved in this as well. Of course. Their kids, their grandkids. You know, not, I'm talking on a personal level. I'm dealing with their children, their grandkids. I know, I know of, uh, their, their sons and daughters, yeah, and their kids as well, who are, who are actually doing those things that we're trying to teach in us not to do or how to help them to refrain from such a from such temptations Definitely. but they don't want you to talk about these things because it's I don't know what what why it's I don't a taboo subject it's a threatening subject it's that freedom uh, no one likes to give freedom in this sort of role a lot of people don't want to give you that freedom when you have that freedom you have the power to say what needs to be said uh, and in the reality is how, the truth if you have to say the truth and it's going to come with this backlash it's going to come with whatever with it I'm sorry to say you know I'll end on this note too which is it has to be said. And if it means that one Atikur Rahman, one Imam has to take that hit to open up the avenues of potential future scholars and Imams that are going to be British born, they're going to be you know, British born Imams that have lived the, the, their entire life in this country. They've grown up, they understand the culture, they're part of the culture. They've got friends that are going to come to them now. You know, now that you're an Imam, you know, I've got friends that my age now they're coming to me with their issues. Why? Because we grew up together. We went to school. We played football together on the weekends. But now because of this, you know, extra duty that we have on our head, they can approach us. They're not going to go to the imam that's 50 years old, that's 60 yeah. years old. They can't. Yeah. They can't speak about these things. You know, we have issues, husband and wife issues. We have, you know, addictions that unfortunately, even after marriage, these addictions haven't stopped and it's affecting their marital life. It's affecting them having children. You know, that's how deep we're going into this. You know, they're, they're watching, you know, late at night when they've come back from work. And these are these are scenarios that people have told us that they've come back from work downstairs. They're sat downstairs and watching things. And then they can't have an intimate time with their wife because further, further, finished. even worse, even worse. Oh, there's not enough time here, yeah, but there's more to it. There's there's husbands who come home yeah, and they call the wife, man. They call the wife cheating. Mm. 
It's happening. The husband we cheats somebody else. We can't brush this away. It's happening. Ah, we can't so brush it away. We can't cover it today. Maybe well, next so time. Many, uh, yeah. I really appreciate it. Inshallah, this, uh, in, in, in the future, Definitely. we will say another time because we can't cover all these issues at one time. No, can't. But you, it's been a pleasure having you appreciate, on the podcast. I appreciate you having me. And I want you back again to in the future Definitely. on a plan more podcast. Definitely. And and hopefully guys yeah um, I'm trying to make the podcast bigger and more more valuable at the moment based on my um, what is it resources this is all I can manage for now <laughs> please please pray for me and please um, I don't know what, what is it that I pray for pray for the community that we work for pray, pray for the pray for our children pray for our husband and wives future, the people yeah. who are there who are struggling Definitely. fathers who are struggling mothers who are struggling kids who are struggling to find their identity but Bengali Pakistani Indian Muslim British who the hell are we what are we you know what I mean like, so many it. concerns and so many questions There's so much so work many, to do so, so much work to work. do so much work to do that's the and that's we are in a society we are Flipping governed by incompetent MPs and councillors who are only after their own pockets. Unfortunately, at times. And it's Allah us. Allah. Yeah. Me, incompetent individual. Yeah. Yeah. Us sitting down oh. here with a bike here, yeah, thinking <laughs> can change the world. <laughs> Even if it's one person, Alhamdulillah. It's a, it's a start. It's a start, isn't it? That's one less person to worry about. If you can, <laughs> if you can help one person, that's one less person to worry I'm about. I'm trying to help myself, man. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Anyway, thank you. Uh, Mostly, well, appreciate Atik, your time. Thank you very Fantastic. much for coming, yeah, it's been awesome. coming on. It's, it's been, been a pleasure having you on. Guys, if you found this uh, podcast uh, valuable, if you found it worthwhile and you want more of this, please subscribe, like, share, comment. Guys, comment. Put your thoughts in the comment box. I want to know what you think, how I can improve, how, where and what should be discussed and who you want me to call down recommend to people that I want that you want on the podcast I want to hear it all I want to hear it all so guys thank you very much assalamu alaikum peace